Dream Team, it's your boy D Neil back with another reaction video, guys. Here we are with Neil deGrasse Tyson explains why the sky is blue. Before we dive into this, make sure you guys subscribe to the channel, ring notification bell, give the video a thumbs up so it gets suggested. What we got? Chuck, what's been eating you? So here's a question. Hey, uh, they actually together this time. That's dope. Uh, resonates with my, um, I shall say, razor sharp. Also, this is a premium request from Anonymous. Uh, if you got a favorite video suggestion, you can subscribe to Patreon, drop it in the comment section or in the description section. There's a premium request link. Acumen. Why is the sky blue? <laughs> mm. <laughs> That's a good I mean, question. That hasn't been answered since childhood. You know what? Here's the problem. Mm. I asked once, and they were like, mind your business, and that was the end of it. <laughs> <laughs> well, you might say, I want to become an atmospheric scientist. It is my business. Ah, that would have that been Well, there you very, go. That would have been a very snappy comeback <laughs> <laughs> for a three-year-old. <laughs> mind your business. Yeah, it is my business. I would like to be an atmospheric scientist. So, All right. So it's, the answer is... Easy to understand, it's just not simple. First of all, is mm. the sky blue? Yes. Okay. Well, at least we got that. Does it look blue to you? It does. Yes. Fine. That's what we're about to talk about. All right. Okay, okay. Because, hey, the lad, when they talked about colors, that, you know what I'm saying? When they was talking about red, ain't really red, but it's the reflection of light that's not getting a certain color. So it's making it red. It's making you see it as red. And yeah, I was like, mind blown. So I understand what my guy had to add. Is it really blue? Is it, or, or am I just seeing a reflection of light in a different way that making it look blue? You, I understand it. Okay, so here's the deal. The explanation is actually simple. It just takes a little while to explain. Okay. That's all. All right. All right. I have time. You have time? I have some time. <laughs> <laughs> yes, and boom. <laughs> all right, so we have an atmosphere. Okay. Mm -hmm. We all know this. Yes, we do. Okay. It's composed primarily of nitrogen. Okay. A 78% nitrogen. It's 20, 21% oxygen mm -hmm. and oh. a few percent other carbon dioxide, this sort of thing. Mixed in there are particles of like pollen and dust and sand from sandstorms and pollution yeah. and smog. And so particulates. Par Ooh. Particulates. <laughs> particulates. Okay. Particulates. Now, I like the way he said that. Particulates, like the way he said that. Light comes from the sun. Mm -hmm. Yes. White light. Pe people say the sun is yellow. It's white. Right. Okay. Exactly. The sun is you white. See the sun in the middle of the day. It's 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 white. It is white. Okay. That's the proper color of the sun. Right. In the middle. So the sun is not. I. This is another mind blowing. You know what I'm saying? Discovery for me. The sun is not yellow. The sun is actually white. This stuff, I, I'm telling you, I don't be nowhere. I, Neil deGrasse Tyson be educating me out here. The sun is white. Okay, got it. In the sun in the middle of the day, it's, it's, it's white. It is white. Okay? That's the proper color of the sun right. in the middle of the day. Let's not get racist. Let's... <laughs> <laughs> Damn, Chuck, why is everything racist to you? I love these I two, man. <laughs> I love these two together, bro. These two are absolutely perfect together. <laughs> All, right. All right. So, you may remember that white light is composed of colors. Right. Okay. Put that's how you, prism. That's how you get a rainbow. All right. Or, or you're, you're educated, you said prism, but through a raindrop, it spreads them out into colors. Right. And you get the colors of the rainbow, Roy G. Biv. Okay. Give them to me. Right, red, green, blue, yellow. Roy Red, uh, orange, Biv. yellow. <laughs> red, orange, yellow, green, blue, purple, red, orange, right, Roy G. Biv. Biv. I don't know, in the, in the, yeah, in the rainbow song that we learned in elementary, it was red, orange, yellow, green, blue, purple, red, orange, yellow, green, blue, purple, red, orange, yellow, green, blue, purple. And these are the colors of the rainbow, something like that. Uh, Roy, uh, <laughs> red, orange, green, uh, red, orange, Roy, yellow. Yeah, yeah. Oh, red, orange, yellow, green, blue. And I'm ultraviolet, but violet. Violet. Biv. Okay, indigo, violet. Thank you. Red. Okay. Red, orange, yellow, green, green, blue, 
indigo, indigo violet. violet. Okay, the seven colors of the spectrum. Okay, right. if you Blue, indigo, the way violet. our brain works <laughs> and the sensors in your retina. Mm -hmm. Okay, the rods, the, the rods cones. cones. Yeah, the rods give you shades of of of, of light and intensity. Uh -huh. The cones uh, disentangle color. Okay. Okay, and you have an RGB cones. Nice. Okay, so we get RGB from. Right. You've heard that in computers That's and right. the computer screens and everything. Okay, so you're you're you are chemically with the chemicals in your retina splitting that red light into combinations of red, green, and blue. Okay. Okay. Hmm. Broad combinations of these three. If you have more red than the others, then what you look at is going to look more red to you. Right. If you have more mm -hmm. blue than the others, it's going to look blue. Now here's what happens: white light comes down from the sun. Okay. Is that what it does? <laughs> <laughs> the particles in the atmosphere, some of them are about the same size as the wavelength of blue light. Sweet. Oh, wow. All right now, if, the, if you have a particle and light, and there's a particle is the same size as that light, it'll reflect. That's right. It'll, it, it, or, or scatter. That's the proper word. Okay. Bounce, okay. scatter. And so that light doesn't make it straight through. It sends in every other direction. Oh. So the light from the sun is selectively has the blue removed on its way down to Earth's surface. Oh. And, the, and the blue scatters into mm. the air. And you have a blue sky. That's, That's crazy. Th the light from the sun has the blue removed. And so it scatters into the sky. And that's why we have a blue sky. See, that stuff is crazy and mind-blowing to learn. And I just wish Neil deGrasse Tyson would have been one of my teachers. I feel like I'd be a lot more knowledgeable about things. Very romantic. It is beautiful. Now, now it's called Rayleigh Scattering. A guy named Rayleigh. Rayleigh R Scattering. R-A-Y-L-E-I-G-H. Okay? Lord Rayleigh. Of okay. course, Lord <laughs> <Rayleigh>. <laughs> <laughs> You figured this stuff out. You a Lord. Right. All right. <laughs> um, so, so here's the thing. As the sun gets lower in the atmosphere, right. the path length of the light is much longer through the air. Okay, so in other words, so here's your atmosphere. If you're directly above, you're going through like this thickness. As you come down, the thickness gets more. Right. Okay? Right. Well, more atmosphere, more scattering. Right. The sky gets more blue. Okay, so in the daytime, it's, quote, sky blue. That's actually a pale blue. Right, it's a very pale blue. As you go to twilight, that sucker gets deep. Yeah. It gets deep blue. And so much more blue gets taken out of the sun. I, I just love how violent deep blue is. <laughs> <laughs> you that much blue, the sun ain't got no blue light left at all. So what color is it going to turn? Kind of red. Kind of red. Kind of red. Kind of red, mm -hmm. amber. Yeah. Okay. That's why sunsets mm. are red. Oh, that's. Ah. Oh. Because so much blue was taken out. Right. Dang. That is, that's all it has left to give you is the side of the spectrum where you have red, orange, yellow. That's now wow. sometimes you have a very bright sunset that's not quite deep red. There aren't many particles there for that sunset. There aren't many particles. Sweet. So that's so. That's legit insane. That's the, bro. I feel like I'm just learning. I feel like I'm back in school. I'm back a kid in school, clean slate, and I'm learning about the world all over again. I'm learning about colors all over again. I'm learning about science all over again. I'm starting over from scratch. That's how I feel when I'm watching this. <clears throat> kind of a lighter cut, like night, you know. Yeah, yeah, so, so the sky wouldn't get as intensely as blue intense when that blue happens. Effect, right. It'll be mm. similar to the sky blue you had earlier in the day. <laughs> so that's, that's why we have a blue sky. Nice. Wow. Now, it's also why you can't see stars in the daytime other than the sun. Hmm. Well, it's, 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 not, it's not, oh, you can't see stars in the daytime because the sun is out. Right. That's not why. Because the sun is brighter than the starlight that you would otherwise see. No, that's not why. Well, see, that's intuitive. No. That's how you would think. It's intuitive, but it's wrong. Okay? <laughs> the reason why you can't see stars in the daytime is because the scattered blue light has rendered our atmosphere a glow. Nice. The, the atmosphere is hmm. glowing blue light. And that prevents you from seeing the stars behind it. If you wow. took away the atmosphere, you'd be able to look up and see the sun. The sun will be there, but then you like dark adjust over here, and there's full sky, full stars right over here. Wow. Over there, over there, all around. Oh, man. Wow. You know what? what? If we didn't need atmosphere, I'd want to get rid of it. 
so now. Nah, that's crazy. That's legit crazy. Like when they go to, when he goes into the reasoning and the and the explanations behind these things, like wow. So like it's not that the sun's too bright. It's that this blue light has scattered in the atmosphere and it's blocking you from seeing the stars behind the blue light. You know? So that's why you can't see the stars in the day. This is what led to the operational definition of the edge of the atmosphere. Okay. Okay. It's, it's just, it's kind of operational. It is how high up in the air do you have to go before there aren't so many air molecules above you for the blue light to scatter and prevent you from seeing the night sky. So it's really about the number of particles. Yes. It's not the density about of particles. the actual. No, it's just the density of particles, wherever that happens. So we agree, just by convention, that if you go up 100 kilometers, okay. convert it, it gets 62 miles. 100 kilometers, that's about where the atmosphere is thinned out. Mm -hmm. So that it's no longer scattering blue light. It okay. is no longer a glow. And in broad daylight, you can see stars in the nighttime sky. So that's wow. the operational definition of space. The operational definition of space is 62 miles above our ground. Earth's surface, correct. Earth's surface, where you can just see space, basically. Because the atmosphere, because the atmosphere that atmosphere remains, is, there's still atmosphere there, but it's not dense enough to scatter blue light and render it a glow to prevent you from seeing the night sky. Wow. Now, I'm not comfortable with that opera. I understand it. Okay. I, I'm not comfortable. Now, what's your problem with that? Because if the atmosphere were half as thick as it is? Well, then it would be only be 30. It would be 30, 31, 30, miles. 31 miles. That would be space. Well, suppose we're a tenth as it. Then it would be three miles. Suppose we didn't have an atmosphere. You'd be in space just standing here, sitting here like this. Should That's that be crazy. called space? That's what I'm saying. It's mm. our definition of space is linked to how, to, to the circumstances of our atmosphere. That kind of makes sense. Well, no, it does. Our definition of space is linked to our circumstances of atmosphere. That's really crazy to think about when he puts it like that. Like, that's really kind of crazy to, like, just think about and fathom and come to an understanding of that. I see what you're saying now, because I was about to say it kind of makes sense because you can't breathe in space, but... You also cannot breathe at 35,000 feet. Right, right, right. That's why airplanes have windows <laughs> that, that don't roll around. <laughs> That'd be crazy. Excuse me. <laughs> trying to get to Australia. <laughs> you tell me we're trying to. <laughs> hey, yeah, you want to go over here and take a left at that cloud. <laughs> yeah. I take love a left these before the cloud well. disappears. I'm right, telling you exactly. where to drive. Uh, yeah, so it makes sense. You're, I, well, it's just I about where you can breathe. Yeah, I see where your problem is. It's hard is. enough to breathe just on a mountaintop. Exactly. You ever so, run a quarter mile on a mountaintop? I've never run a quarter mile. <laughs> <laughs> so, now. You might so, say, what would your operational definition of space be if it is not indeed uh, this this particular either in, atmospheric link? Either, and, thank you. If you take out the atmosphere, either you're in orbit or you're going somewhere. Then you're in space. Oh, so you're using, oh, God, you are such a damn astrophysicist. You, you got you problem with that? You are using gravity as the measure of what makes space. At least you, you are consistent. <laughs> oh, my God. That's amazing. And that would be true no matter what atmosphere we had. I should have known. <laughs> what? I'm just saying. It's like, of course. He's like, no, nah, man, where does gravity fit into this? <laughs> okay. All right, you're about all <laughs> so you know how much atmosphere that is? You're 62 miles. That's high up. I'm right. going to show you. All right. Oh my God! You had to break a globe to show us. I this. just took it on. This is this is this is like God. Oh, that's just a holder. This is God holding uh, up the globe. That's okay? Atlas. Okay. That's okay. Atlas. Right. Right. Okay. <clears throat> so this is so dope, bro. I love watching these videos. I love learning. I love being educated. And these two are the perfect educators to not only educate but to entertain. Oh, so, I'm gonna show you. Here's the United States. Mm -hmm. Right. And. I just did some distances I know of New York to Boston. There we are. That's 200, uh, 200, 200 miles, I don't okay? Know. Go ahead. 220 miles, no, 180 miles. All okay? right, all right. So, so you take a third of that distance. Okay. That's 60. Okay. Make that go vertically up. All right. That's the edge of our atmosphere. Three eighths of an inch up. Three eighths of one inch off this is what makes it. Is, is, oh my God, we're in danger. So, <laughs> Earth, that is not cool. <laughs> Earth's atmosphere is to Earth 
as the skin of an apple is to an apple. That's what I'm saying. We don't have That's much crazy. air. We are in danger. That air is frail and fragile. Oh my God. And you're doing what to it? And we're doing all kinds of nasty stuff to it. That is unbelievable. Oh, Would you everything. eat an apple that somebody just rubbed crap all over? <laughs> no. Uh, oh, that's insane. Oh, so I didn't, I didn't, uh, sorry, I, I misspoke. Three eighths of an inch up, that's the altitude of the International Space Station orbiting. Oh my God, so our atmosphere is actually is less than below that. Yeah, that. yeah, so I'm just looking in here. There's New York and there's Boston. So you're talking a couple of millimeters, about a, you know, a millimeter above, two oh, that's millimeters. that's terrible. That's the thickness of the air above which we say you entered space. Why are we not teaching this in school? I mean, seriously, if you, if, if you ever want to have a true appreciation of just what a delicate balance we live in, that is it right there. I swear Correct. to God. Ugh. Correct. It's chilling. That's the really chilling. The skin of an apple is to an apple as the shellac on this globe is to the globe itself. Ugh. That is our atmosphere. Oh, my God. Dude. Well, there you have it. We're all going to die. <laughs> 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 so that's why the sky is blue. That's right. That's why we should look after this little bit of air that we got here on the surface of the earth. I'm with you. And it's why Neil thinks space should be defined by gravity, not by not what the circumstances of our atmosphere happen to be. There you go. Mm. You know, I'm going to agree with all three, man. Yeah, And not because you're my boss. <laughs> 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 That's a Star Talk info bit. As always, keep looking up. Nah, that was crazy, bro. Like that, I I'm literally sitting here mind blown. Like, wow, I did not know the atmosphere was that close to Earth. Like, I thought like when they was going to space, they had to go like miles and miles and miles outside of our atmosphere, bro. Like. But space isn't that far. It sounds from what what they said, space is not that far. That's crazy. That's all we got. You guys got a favorite video suggestion? You can subscribe to Patreon and drop it in the comment section. It's your boy Dino. Out.